We know he's slick. He's been around a long time. That's why we need a God that's much wiser than the slick devil. Lord, help us to be what you would have us to be. Go with us and stand by us and keep us in your care. Strengthen us where we weep. Fill us up where we're spiritually torn down. Help us to faint not, neither let us fall by the wayside. Help us to continue in prayer and in fasting and in the reading of your most holy word. Help us to continue as you told your disciples a new commandment I leave with you is that you do what? Love one another. Help us to love one another. And if we love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and we love one another, then we will do what we are supposed to do. Help us, Lord, to hold to these two truths. Because all the laws and testaments can be built on those two commandments. Bless us today. Bless the young people as they perform. And all that performing, all the singing, all the clapping, and the, and the, and the word of God as they come forth. Let it touch hearts and go deep into souls and deliver Bind the enemy on every hand, rebuke them and cast them out. Bless those that are on their way here, Lord. Give them safe passage. Lord, we ask you to keep us in your care. Keep us with our minds. Stay on you, Father. These are all the best we ask and thank you for right now in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Sunday, so we're going to get into our youth, youth day. And before we get into our youth day, just have a quick question for you. According to 1 Peter, the fourth verse, how should Christians respond to a fairy trials? Which trial? A. Endure. B. Avoid. C. Rejoice. Or D. Resent. First, uh, according to First Peter. Peter. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. What was that? That's what it is. Oh, it can be for anybody. Oh, well, well, according to First Peter four, how should Christians respond to the fiery trials which try them? A. Endure. B. Avoid. C. Rejoice. Or D. Resent them. Rejoice. It was raise your hand. Yeah. Well, you ain't say raise your hand. I get some money. I, get, I don't get my money because I didn't raise my hand. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Let me ask you a quick another one, man. Real quick. Let's see. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust to be punished when a their death, b proper time, c day of judgment. R D, the future. Can you repeat that again? Yeah, you're muffled. Yeah, you kind of muffled. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust to be punished when A, their death, B, a proper time, C, day of judgment, R D, the future. Yeah, money. It's one dollar. <laughs> Which one? A. He said B. No, C. No, he corrected his B. It's proper time. Proper time. All right, baby. <laughs> it's a point of time. I think it probably says that in there. No, yeah, I say proper time. Uh, point of time. Point of time. Mm -hmm. All right, you going to win with other Hey, I ain't got my money. <laughs> you saying this? <laughs> We're going to go into an opening song. Y'all sing along with me. Anybody, I'm going to get my money. You know? <laughs> 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 We're actually pleased to come as we're going to open this song. Y'all know how I feel about singing, so y'all sing with me now. Down at the cross where my Savior died.
having safe classes or arranging, arranging super providing labs and keeping us in good health. And for waking us up this morning. And I thank you for taking us to church that we might be able to come together to worship you. And thank you for providing for us and giving us strength. And, and thank you for dying on the cross for us so that we might be saved. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen.
Elijah, C, Daniel, D, Moses, or E, Abraham. That's the kids first one that anybody can ask. When John said, I am the voice of the one calling in the desert, make straight for the way of the Lord. Which prophet is he quoting? A, Isaiah, B, Elijah, C, Daniel, D, Moses, E, or Abraham? Isaiah. And she's correct. First of all, our saints, we will now be having an instrumental at this time by Brother Latendrick Willis.
doing for the Lord.
praise and worship. If you didn't get your worship in, well, still got some service left. Amen. Um, at this time, <clears throat> we have two more things before I move with that. We have one more scripture by Brother Solomon. Come on. Psalms 37, I'm going to read to 11. But the wicked shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plot up against the judge and gash up upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him with his teeth that he that is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bow shall be broken. A little that righteousness man hath is better than the rich of many wicked. For the arm of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord of Lord the righteousness, and their inheritance shall be forever. Amen. Next up, we have a small selection by. <laughs> My sister Mary Ann's granddaughter, I forget her name, right? Zayana. Hmm? Zayana. Zayana. Thank you. I forgot her name. <laughs> but she's going to go ahead. She volunteered herself to sing this one. She's, she's going to come on up and she's going to give us a selection of her own. Come on up, This is a lot of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This is a lot of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. And I have your brother Phillips wife. 
Why y'all scholars over there debating? On this, at this time, we'll be having our food for thought from uh, some of our lovely guest ministry, who is not really a guest here, ninety-nine yes, percent yes. of the time. Um, <laughs> no other than uh, evangelist Malcolm George Malcolm Dix. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I've enjoyed this uh, youth day. It's been such a wonderful uh, service today. And I always enjoy my little friend. She done went out to church. Praise the Lord. What's her name? Right. Yeah, I, I always enjoy her. It looks like the saxophone is playing. He always want to play everybody happy. Then he stops. <laughs> when everybody gets happy, he stops. Yeah, you always make them want to come back for more. <laughs> I've been enjoying that sax. I love the hill saxophone. Praise the Lord. It was beautiful. Praise the Lord, Sister Grace, and all of the children who done their thing. Everett, praise the Lord. Now, you ain't looking at your cell phone now, did you? <laughs> you ain't got to answer that. Praise the Lord. But uh, we know that... Um, uh, John warned the king about his sin. Let's quickly turn to, now this food for thought, I got to be a kid today, so we got to do it not only in a hurry, but we got to do it kid style. Is that all right? Make it plain. Praise the Lord. Make it plain, and we're going to do it kid style. All right, let us turn to 2 Kings 5th chapter. Praise the Lord, 2 Kings 5th chapter. We're not going to go through the whole chapter because, uh, was just food for thought. Praise the Lord. But I want to speak directly to the kids, but hopefully adults get something out as well. But we want to speak directly to the kids. How many in here, how many kids are 18 and under? Raise your hand. 18 and under. Raise it up high. I want to see them. Raise it up high. All right. We got a, it a blessing by the congregation of our kids. Praise the Lord. That's great. That's wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. All right, 2 Kings 5. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about a very familiar story, but talk about a very unfamiliar person. <laughs> a very familiar story, but a very familiar, unfamiliar person. Praise the Lord. Are we all there? Yes. And the Bible reads, Now, name Captain of the host of the king of Syria was a great man with his minister, uh, with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he war, was a leper. And the Syrian had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. Everybody say a little maid. A little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her master, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria? For he would, everybody say he would. Recover him of his leprosy. I want to skip down to the 14th verse. I would like, if I was preaching, I'd read it all. But I'm not preaching today. I'm just giving food for a thought. So in the 14th verse, bless the Lord, I want to skip down there because we want to expedite time. And in the 14th verse, it reads, then went he down, speaking of naming the leopard, then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Everybody say he was clean. He was clean. 
Now, I want to talk about this very, how many familiar with this story? Raise your hand. Now, how many have honestly heard a message preached on the little man? Yes, yes. I have. On the little man? I had to do it. Oh, you had to do it. <laughs> So was it here? No, it was an online women's session. Online women's <laughs> session. Okay. Now, besides that, you yeah, raise your hand up high if you heard a sermon preached on the little man. I heard. I got two, three, and you heard a sermon preached on the little man. Now, how many have heard it preached on Naaman? How many have heard it preached on the way Elijah did? Shockley, I sure did. Yes, yes. The point that I want to make to the kids that kids matter. If I had a thought, it would be kids matter. Bless the Lord. Children are an this the Lord. little maid was a kid. Yes. Now the Bible doesn't say how old she was, but we know she was a young kid. Bless the Lord. Now, many people say, well, the miracle would not have taken place if he did not dip. Naaman did not dip. Matter of, way, matter of fact, first we, before we go on, how many is familiar with the story? I don't have to recap the story, do I? How many, how many is not familiar with this story? Raise your hand. I, I figured it all, oh, girl. <laughs> I figured everybody is yeah, everybody familiar story, so with this story, how that Naaman was a leopard, and uh, the word got to him through the little maid, so and it got to the king, so the king of Syria, sent him over to Israel to speak with the king, and the king got mad and wrote because he thought it was a trick to get into a war. So Elijah overheard what was said, so Elijah said, well, tell the man to come to me. Let the Lord, he said, now Syria gonna know that it's a God. And so he goes to, um, he goes to uh, Elisha's house, and when he get there, Elisha would not come out. But he sent word and say, go dip in the Jordan seven times. Now Naaman, being a man of valor, a recognized dignitarian, bless the Lord, he said, what in the world would he would have me to dip in a dirty river like Jordan? <laughs> Yeah. Couldn't he find that, that, that many other rivers? He yeah. could send me tonight. He could send me something anywhere. Why Jordan? Uh -huh. Bless the Lord. But then he went away upset, mad, and just, just ready to fight. Bless the Lord. And one of his servants said, now wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Now if you, we told you to do something big like count Mount Everest and when you get to the peak you'll be healed. You'll be up on Mount Everest already headed over there trying to cross the sea to get there. Yep. Now we know he didn't mention Mount Everest but that's the point. Right. But he told you something as simple as the dip in the water. Mm -hmm. And you here fussing and arguing and carrying on. Why don't you just try what the man of God say? So he talked some sense in his head and Naaman went down and he dipped in the water. Bless the Lord, seven times. And on the seventh time, he got up and his flesh was like a child. And the Bible say he was made what? Clean. clean, clean. That's the overview of the story. So some say, well, he never would have gotten this miracle had he not dipped seven times. How many heard preachers preach that? <laughs> He's the Lord. How many even said it themselves? Well, I think we all have said he wouldn't have got a miracle had he not dipped seven times, right? Mm -hmm. Now, then some say, well, he never would have got a miracle if it wasn't for his servant telling him, convincing him, convincing him to do it. How many heard of that? Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Many of us heard that, many of us said it. Uh -huh. Then we have, well, they say, well, if it wasn't for Elisha, who heard the king over talking? He never would have got the miracle because the king, Elijah, rather, wouldn't have never sent him to the Jordan to get the miracle. How many heard that? Just not everybody in here. Bless the Lord, but how many times have you heard where he said, if it wasn't for this little girl who was raised in the church, Listening to her bishop and her deacons and her elders, if it wasn't for that girl, it would not have been a miracle. You haven't, I haven't heard anybody say that. Bless the Lord, but the miracle would never have taken place. It all began with a young lady who was raised in the church, heard the word of God, and then told a heathen 
what God can do. Now what's the food in this? Kids, do you know you matter? Do you know you make a whole big difference in the lives of the people you are going to school with? In the lives of the people who you are surrounded by? That only if you could be bold enough to do what this young lady did, you can also see the miracle of God. Praise the Lord. It all started with a little maid. And I thought about that. When they ask me food for the day, I want to get on Ezekiel 18 because I just want to finish that so bad. But the Lord dropped this in my spirit. And that's when I thought about, you know what? We don't never talk about the little maid. Praise the Lord. So what am I saying, Hannah? I'm saying that look what a little, she was probably your age. Probably wear good long dresses down, down below their knees. I don't know what Hannah's knees look like. Praise the Lord. Because she never come in here with a dress above her knees. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm not condemning anybody that does. That got nothing to do with anything. But I always, I nicknamed her missionary because she dressed like she holy. She looked like she holy and she acted like she holy. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm not saying nobody else do, but there's something special about the way she looked, the way she dressed, and the way she carries herself. Anybody can give me an amen. Amen. Something special about her. So, the point is, she promised a little hymn that walked in, and, 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 and I want the kids to get this. I'm not preaching like y'all preach. I'm trying to keep it on your level. But bless the Lord. Hannah probably walked in now. And her the name and turn of his wife, boy, this leprosy is bothering me today. It I was out in the sun and it was funny, my skin is raw. And that made probably that little Hannah probably, I'm gonna use Hannah today. Hannah probably thought to herself, now if I say something to adults, they're gonna say, don't get involved in post conversation. What would you even listen to our conversation for? Mm -hmm. Isn't that the way some kids think? Yep. But sometimes when it comes down to dealing with God. Sometimes it's good to get in the grown folk conversation. Amen. Praise the Lord. She went to her maiden and a uh, 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 mistress. Yes. And she said, you know what? When I was down in Israel, I went to the church over there in Samaria. Now, we know it wasn't a church, but somewhere along the line, her parents or somebody taught her about God. Isn't it a blessing when we can sit kids and learn about God? That's why it's so important to hear these stories. Because when somebody got cancer, let the Lord saxophone play up and go tell them, I remember when so-and-so had cancer, but my bishop prayed for them. Yeah. Hey, Lord, and God delivered them. That's why it's so important for you kids to get what's going on in the Bible, because it changed the life, not only of a man, but a prominent man. Yeah. Let the Lord. So today, let's not forget the maid. I see my time is already 10 minutes. I got to sit down. Let the Lord, so let's not forget that maid, praise the Lord, that little bit of Hannah, we don't know if her name was Hannah, but we gonna call her Hannah. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, Hannah opened her mouth about the man of God, opened her mouth about God, and through that, a man was healed and his life was spared. Give God a praise. <laughs> Amen.
Greetings from the Faith Temple Evangelistic Church of Jesus Christ, where Bishop James J. Bradley Sr. is our pastor. We are located at 4176 Old Dixie Highway in Gifford, Florida. Our Sunday school service begins at 9.45 a.m. Our morning worship begins at 11 a.m. On the first Tuesday of every month, we have our Bible study from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. We encourage you to fast and pray with us every Wednesday in our corporate fasting. If you have any questions, you can visit our website where you can find our phone number, email, and our Facebook information.
music, you know, and he played by two or three uh, instruments, and he sang. And I thank God for it. I, I, you know, I you just don't forget when you grow up with somebody that loved the Lord. And I tell you, he loved the Lord ever since I can remember. All I know was my uncle Willie loved the Lord. And this is a song that he wrote and recorded. And my uncle had other family members done wrote songs and recorded them too. But some kind of way the records done got lost. Cause my mom had a whole bunch. But back when Gene and Francis Storm came through, a lot of stuff got thrown out the house and the records got lost. But I just want to sing a little bit of this song before I get started. And I ain't gonna hold you real long. Praise the Lord. It say, sometimes my trials get a little hard for me to bear. Sometimes my trials get a little hard for me to bear. Oh, I reach the end of my journey. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon me. Oh, I reach the end of my journey. Trials and tribulation, oh Lord. Through hard trials and tribulation, oh Lord. Oh, I reach the end of my journey, oh Lord. Have mercy upon me, oh. Oh Lord, sometimes I try to give a heart for me to bear. Sometimes I try to give a heart for me to bear. to a little bit of other scriptures, but not too much. I ain't gonna stay too long, but I just wanna say a few words. I'm gonna do John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his, not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yeah. You hear what he said? God loved us so much. Yeah. He gave his only begotten son. How many when you just give your 
your only begotten son. You know I ain't got but one son now. And, and I'm going to give my son for a sacrifice. But you know what? Because of that sacrifice that God gave his son, it gave us a chance in life to live. See, we might not have that chance if we had to give that sacrifice, if he had to give that sacrifice. And you know, I thank God that he gave that sacrifice because it gave me the opportunity to give up my life for him. And only God. See, we got to put God first in everything we do. I say everything. Sometimes you want to put your children or your husband or somebody. I let mine know I love God. I ain't saying I don't love you, but I love God first. See, but God got to be your first and on your last and your everything. Praise the Lord. That's what old Barry White said. You my first, you my last, and my everything. See, he was talking about love. See, that's the kind of love that God got for us. He want us to be his every, y'all, our everything to him. Praise God. Ain't nothing wrong with loving everybody if we supposed to. But put God first in everything you do. Don't let nobody or nothing separate you from the love of God. Because I tell you, when you do, you gonna find yourself lifting your eyes up in hell because you trying to put your children, your husband, your wife, your job, all your car, all material things before God. See, if you put God first, all that other stuff can come along. God gonna give you just what you need when you need it. See, I never had to want for nothing. All I say, you know what? You sometimes you think, oh, where the next paycheck gonna come from? Or where the next money gonna come to pay your bills? But see, when you live for Jesus, God gonna supply every need. He gonna be your everything. He gonna be the light bill. He gonna be the water bill. He gonna be the mortgage. Praise the Lord. My mortgage ain't never been behind. Never had and that ain't got nothing out of my control. But I thank God for Jesus that God made a way when I couldn't see the way. Yes. God took care of me when I couldn't take care of myself. Praise the Lord. Yes. I just thank yes. him today. Praise the Lord. That God can do anything. Yes. See, without God, we can't do nothing. We'll be like a ship without a sail. We'll be sailing from one little bad thing to another thing. And ain't nothing ain't good about it. Praise the Lord. You know, I heard a woman say she was testifying online Monday morning. Because we have Monday morning service. And uh, she said, you know, when she growing up as a child, every time the door, church doors open, mama had her in church. And she said, you wait till I turn 18. I ain't going to church no more. Praise the Lord. So she said, I thank God. When she moved away from Florida, she moved to Washington, D.C. And you know, she thought, I go to Washington, D.C. Nobody don't know me up there. <laughs> you know what, these days, some, I don't care where you go, you're going to meet up with somebody you know. Praise God. So she thought if she go to Washington, D.C., she can hide. And she wouldn't have to go to church. And then she said, all of somebody called her name. And she said, man. I'm way up in Washington, D.C. And I don't know nobody. Who they calling my name? She didn't know somebody from the same town she came from that was living in Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. She thought she could do all the stuff that she was doing and then have to go to church and give an account. But see, we have to give an account of the stuff that we do, especially when we done grown up in church. And we know right from wrong. You get grown and think you're too grown. And forget about Lord the God, but God that we serve. Yes, and the God that have not did so much for you. And you turning your back on him. And think you can hide, but you can't hide from nobody. You used to be hide from people, but you can't hide from people no more. Think you can go behind a building and hide. See, God gonna find somebody gonna walk through that part of all drunk and don't say, hey James, what you hiding from? See, you think you can just hide from people. You can't hide from people no more. Because people see what you're doing too. And you know God see everything. So she told the lady, so she turned around and went and started talking to her. And she said, Lord, have mercy. So way up here watching me. Somebody know me. 
She said, that's what made her turn herself around and say, you know what? I'm about to get myself together. Cause mama didn't teach me this way. Mama told me to be saved, sanctified, filled with God's precious spirit. And I'm trying to hide and run from him. And know you can't hide from God. So God see everything. He got all sin eyes. You might think you can think about something and do this and do that. You can't do nothing from God. God see you. He see everything you do. And then he jumps over and tell you, say, uh, 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 John uh, 14 and uh, John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. He say, believe. Oh, wait a minute. Let me get these glasses on. Say, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mentions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Where I am, there you be also. And whether I go, you know the way. And you know the way. See, we know the way. Ain't no excuses that you don't know the way. You know the way. And you still want to do wrong. So God going to come and just tap you on the shoulder and remind you that. What I say, that's what goes. If you don't want to do what I say, do. I don't need you. See, God don't need us. We need God. Yes, Lord. God don't need us. See, he's God. He got everything. He, everything we got, it don't belong to us. It belongs to God. What for God, we wouldn't even have it. Amen. We wouldn't even have what God got in store for us. Amen. And I thank God that we have a merciful God. They allow us to use the stuff that we got. Cause once we get through you, then we leave away from him. What's gonna happen? The next person gonna come and get it to you. Get up too. So we just appreciate what God do for us. Yes, Lord. We don't think that we did it all by ourselves. See, we didn't do it. Without God, we can't do nothing. Amen. We can't do nothing without God. And I thank God for me knowing that I can't do nothing without him. Amen. Nothing. Praise Nothing. God. Nothing. I was just saw uh, a few weeks ago. I went and got a report about three weeks more ago on a test I took way up in January. And the lady was saying one thing and said, You need to go see your surgeon. And, uh, and uh, you might have to have surgery, but you not start praying about that. I went and see my surgeon. And you know what? He said, Everything looks fine. You ain't going to have to have no surgery because stuff like that don't happen. He said, well, I'm going to be a little bit more safer when I have do an MRI. But see, I already believe God. I'm going on six years clean from cancer. And that ain't the first cancer I had. I had cancer at 20 years old. Before I ever had children, I had cancer twice. I'm 63. God kept me all these years. Rest so Lord. I know what Rest God can do. See, I don't worry about what he can do. I worry about my soul. None of the old junky stuff going into heaven. None but your soul. See, all that ain't going nowhere. I just thank God for keep living the life that God want me to live and do what he want me to do and stay holy with it. No matter how much the devil, devil fight you, you stay holy. Don't let the devil try to fool you. Stay holy. Because he's going to try you everywhere you go. On your job, in your home, especially in your home. When you're close to the most close of people to you, that's where you're going to try it. Mm -hmm. But you keep holding on to Jesus. Yeah, Don't right. let nothing, nobody turn you around for what God got in store for you. Because I'm telling you, I want my mention too. And you can't have mine, and I don't gonna have yours. We're going to have our own. I just want you to let you know that keep the love of Jesus in your heart. No matter how people treat you, because we don't always be treated right. Might be your neighbor, might be the people on your job. You keep on loving them anyhow. In spite of how people treat you, oh, love them with a love of in high. Show them love. You know what? When you keep on showing them love and tell them, have a nice day. And, and God bless you. Keep saying it. And see whether God turn them around. 
Yes, God Lord. will turn them around. You hear what I say? Turn Amen. them around. I saw a girl the other day I had sewing gear. And she said, she thought of my older sister Brenda. I said, no, this is Janet. She said, oh my goodness. So good to see you. I said, good to see you. And you know what, before, you know people know when you're good, you got a good heart. Before she left out that room, she said, I love you. You know what, I, I said, I love you too. And you tell the family I send my love. You know, that's, that's the kind of love we're supposed to have in this world. Yes, Lord. We got to have the love of Jesus in the inside. Some yeah. people, like I said, people ain't gonna treat you right all the time, but you have the love of Jesus in your heart. Treat them right in spite of them. I ain't tell you let nobody beat all over you and hit you and knock you down. Sometimes they, they say the words, sometimes they say some words, feel like they don't knock you down. But that's all right. You keep on loving them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Yes, and ask God to don't let nothing bad get in your heart against them because they got some against you. It's all right. It's all right. Because God got you. As yes, long as you got that love of God on the inside, God got you. Amen. And I tell you, I'm going to live a witness. God got you. No matter what I have went through in my life, I remember one thing. God got me. Amen. It don't matter what you did or how you did or how you treat me or how you done mistreated my children or my children did wrong. It don't matter. God got me. And I know God going to take care of the rest of it. See, I can't worry about a lot of things because I got a cousin. She's 84 years old. And I never seen her let nothing get her down. She lost two sons in the last four years. She got a son in prison for 30 years, been there about 20. But you know what? She lost her husband when she was still young, raising by, she had 13 children. And she was still raising by eight of them when he passed away. All those children, and she raised them by herself with the grace of God. She did nothing separate her from God. She don't let nothing bother her, period. I don't care how bad it is. She just smiles and just said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, just another trial, God trying to, just another trial that God putting us through, seeing who's going to stand. See, some people, they be going through so much of trials and tribulations, they can't take it. Some of them lose their mind. Some of them can't, they walk away from God thinking they can fix it. But you know what? I know a man that can fix anything. He can get you through to anything. Sometimes God do things to get your attention or make you stronger, be able to tell somebody Amen. that I love you. No, in spite of what we're going through, God still loves us. You know, he still loves us. He took my mama, he took my daddy, but that's all right. Mama going to be with the Lord, see. I know where mama at. Mama ready. See, we got to have that mind too. When God come and take us, we better be ready. Don't think it's going to die and get ready. You got to do it while you got breath and running warm in your body. And while you're still breathing. Because once you close your eyes and go, it's over with. Ain't no repenting from the grave. You got to get all that repentance out right now. And if you ain't got it where, and where you need to be with God, let me tell you something. You better get it. Time is winding up, saints. And God is soon to come. And we see it every day with all the wars and all the troubles, all the shooting, all the accidents, all kinds of stuff going on in this world. It can be one of us. We can be at the right place, wrong time. And something can happen to one of us. But in the meantime, stay with the Lord. Stay with the Lord. Stay with the Lord. No matter where you go in the grocery store, stay with the Lord. Even when the lady run over your feet over with the basket. Stay with the Lord. Because yeah. sometimes way back in the day, you'd be ready to fight in the grocery store unless somebody bumped you. Amen. It ain't say I'm sorry, excuse me. You know, some of these women was a little crazy back then. I thank God I didn't get involved. I know I just shut my mouth and move on forward. One thing about even when I was in school, I didn't even get in trouble. I didn't get in no fights with no friends or arguments. You know what? Because my mama told me to love everybody in my heart. Treat people right, even they don't treat you right. right. Just give them a nice smile. Amen. Just say, have a nice day. Yeah. And, and I tell you, you'll be surprised. And to today, any classmate I ever meet up with, they still treat me just like we was way back up 13 to 12 years old. 
never changed. Got a friend that I've been friends with for 50, almost 57 years, since we were five. And I tell you, never had an argument. Never ever been mad. Never had nothing bad to say about each other. And every time I say, all right, sister, I love you, she tell me the same thing. We may be saying almost the same time. Love you. Now that's the friend. But say a friend indeed, a friend indeed. That's that she she's a real good friend. That's the kind of friend we got with Jesus. Amen. Yes, he's Lord. a friend in need, and he's a friend indeed. Yes, so Lord. I'm gonna tell you something. Trust the Lord. And all you do, obey God. Keep your mind on Jesus and don't keep all that trouble in your heart. Amen. Turn it loose. Let go and let God, no matter what we go through. Yes, Cause Lord. I tell you, I go through something with my grandchildren, my children, all of them. But let me tell you, I tell them one thing. Y'all don't want to be saved, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. I done told I brought you up the right way in the church. You better get right. You don't know when you're going to leave way for him. Mm -hmm. Some of you start talking all that foolish stuff. I said, let me go. I ain't got time for that foolish stuff. I'm telling you, I done told you what God said. Don't mean to tell you. And I leave it alone. I'm not gonna just waste all my breath and energy. I gave it to God and I have to turn it loose. Cause that letter right there comes telling God, I don't believe we can do it. Amen. See, when mama Amen. said to her children, she want her children to be saved. She didn't hound up. She said, you just about to get saved before it's too late. And I listened. I thank God that I came back when I did come back. And when God delivered me and saved me this time, out my backside, but when he saved me and sanctified me and filled me with his precious spirit, I don't have no desire to go back. Oh, bless the Lord. I don't bless have no desire to even look back. Bless the Lord. Because I think about a lot when I turn into that pillow of salt. I don't want to be that pillow of salt. Amen. I want to keep on going with Jesus. Yes. And you better do it too. And when you run into somebody that want to hear about Jesus, you tell them about Jesus. Everybody don't want to hear. And they think they know more than you. And they ain't living right. But a lot of them do know the Bible. And they know what the Bible says. But they don't want to live it. So sometimes we have to just let them go and give it to God. They got to make up and you make up. They got to make up in their mind. I'm going to get myself right before it's too late. Somebody, a lot of them ain't going to make it. But you make it. Say, I can make it if I try. Yes, and Lord. you keep on trying every day of your life. Even if you done made a mistake or you fell down, get up. Amen. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get Don't up. let the devil just ride you. Amen. You get up and stand for Jesus. Yes, Lord. Don't just stand for no anything. Stand for Jesus. Yes. Praise God. I just thank God for Jesus. Thank God for our pastor. Just give me an opportunity to say something Amen. to you guys. Because I love the Lord. And I, I promised the Lord that I will hold out. Yeah. I will hold out to the end. Yeah. And I will Lord, tell, them, Lord, tell people Lord, about Lord. Jesus. See, we have to tell somebody about Jesus. Because I know Jesus loves all of us. He just wants us to be saved. He wants us to make it in. So keep on keeping on and do what God tells you to do. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen.
Amen. Made a promise. I'm going to hold out. When the time will get hard, I'm going to hold out. Amen. Sometimes I feel like, amen, all my friends are gone, but I'm going to hold out until they meet me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I won't be caught up. Meet the Lord in there. Can you say amen? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank God. For God so loved the world that he gave it all. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I believe I preached that scripture to them about every revival I ran. One night, out of the week, or the two weeks I'll be running revivals, wherever I go, I have to preach that. I have to preach that song. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah, and, and it seems like they catch the attention of every people everywhere I go when I preach that for God so loved the world. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Amen. Thank and he gave it Thank only God. to God himself. Glory to God. Because y'all believed in him. Yes. Amen. Should not perish. Yes. But have yes. everlasting life. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. God gave his only son. Glory yes. to God. Yes. Glory to God. God gave me a message in that team like to me to just touch, to just touch people and grab them. Every time I preach it, and I was preaching, like I say, in every revival that I ran, I ran revivals all over. Amen. Miami to New York, Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, you name it, I ran revival. Amen. I preach that, I preach that sermon. Amen. In every revival that I know I go to God. And it was a captivating message to a lot of people. Oh. Praise the Lord. And that's what the Lord wants us, want us to be able to reach out and, and get somebody. How many can say that I called somebody to come to the Lord. Amen. How many can see it? How many got that on your record? Yes. Amen. You. But if you're saved, if you're sanctified, you ought to have it on your record. Amen. If you call somebody Amen. to come to the Lord. Yes, Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You ought to have it on your record. If you ain't got it on your record, you need to, Amen. Back up and get a little bit of hot test. Because you've been running regular too long. Can you say amen? amen? Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for that word today. Amen. amen. He loved the world. And he gave it all to the God and Son. Praise the Lord. And whosoever. Amen. Whosoever. Not, there won't be too many people that will help us. <laughs> but whosoever. Amen. We'll be saved. Can you say amen? amen. Glory yes. to God. Thank the Lord. So we thank God today for the message and the messenger. She always has something good to say. And when she noticed when she hit him, she hit here, hit down, and hit here, and just about hit everybody in the church before she finished. Can you say amen? amen. Clap your hand and give the Lord a praise. Amen. So many things you said, if you took, took note on it, it, it took just about everybody in the church. Glory be to God. And we thank God for the word of the Lord. Thank God for sending her our way. She could have went to some place, another church. She should have joined another church. She didn't have to join him. Bless the Lord. But she saw the good in it. And that's why we need to live so that folks will see the good in you. We act so and talk so that people will see the good in you. Bless the Lord. And if folks can't see the good in you, they move on. Praise the Lord. Thank God. But thank God. The Lord blessed her to come with me with us now. Been up till now about five years. And I give the Lord a praise. Amen. amen. Lord. Can you say amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Lord God, this time, that they want to thank and they need a prayer, 
Glory to God. Pray I change this thing. Amen. And I I say all the time, the will of the Lord has to be done. Can you say amen? Amen. We can pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. The will of the Lord has to be done. Amen. Amen. But we say today, there's anyone that stands in the need of prayer. I'm going to ask you to come. Amen. At this time. But God still work miracles. Amen. 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 Amen